hello. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, and thank you to the whole team. They are doing a really crazy, a great job. So personal growth, or how it is titled here, how to live our full potential through co-creation while using the method dragon dreaming. Uh, one short question. Who has heard about the method dragon dreaming? One, two, three. OK. Thank you for that. OK. Um, can I please have the video? So the question behind how to live my full potential started like 15 years ago, finishing my studies, coming out of the corporate world as a German engineer, and just knowing one thing that the, what thrives me really in, in all my work that I've done till far was how to find human-centered solutions. So loving the possibilities that corporate world have, it was always this lack for me personally to find meaningful, meaningful work. So that's why I moved to Berlin and in Berlin I enjoyed this creative spot where everything is possible and um, there I found myself in a house project where we started like 15 years ago um, to establish the first thoughts round about how to build communities, to build an ecosystem with a shared economy. Um, we've been thinking about and, tr and, and trying the first four prototypes of how to integrate the basic income in such an organization, um, which helps the individual to really dive into his creative potential and start to build an organization which helps the individual to, to have more, more, more time to breathe and not run behind numbers, run behind bills that have to be paid. So in this project, um, we became in three years extremely successful that we even worked with the government together working on one of the biggest urban projects which is the transformation of um, an airport which is very in the center of the city to an um, accelerator for social innovations. What was the thoughts and the idea at the beginning when we started to work, it transformed into a real estate market interest stuff and how to make money and how to make politics. Um, and with, with, um, um, with this amazing project um, where we started to have real impact in the city of Berlin. Um, we as a sub-project, uh, our house project where everything started, um, also fall and um, lost the fight against the real estate market. So we lost everything, what we have built in five years. And I was asking myself, okay, how is this possible? All experts always recommend um, to do what you're passionate about, to do what you love. So we did it, and uh, we really lived a co-creative community. We did all that stuff, and still we failed. So, and this failure was quite painful. So I just left Europe and went to Latin America and um, had the great opportunity to work with beautiful elders from different um, indigenous traditions in uh, South America, Mexico, in the desert, in the Amazon. So, and I could learn what, what they understand, how to build communities, how to build villages, how to live a balanced life, which includes your family, which includes your, um, your, your history, your ancestors, your spirits, the earth. Um, and still there, um, I didn't find answers which fit into my European brain and my German engineering mind setting. So there, out of nothing, popped up a beautiful open source method which is called Dragon Dreaming. And Dragon Dreaming is a, a project design method um, which supports to create community and which supports that each individual has a possibility to include himself fully, 100% in a project. 
So um, I started to work with Dragon Dreaming, and as you can imagine, Dragon Dreaming is a quite challenging name, so, and I'm working in the entrepreneurial surrounding. It's like always when you start to work with people and consult other, other projects, it's like, yeah, we would like to work with Dragon Dreaming. What? Dragon Dreaming? What's that? So Dragon Dreaming, and working also in the field of, of marketing and branding, we, we really worked out, okay, that's the name that we, that we need to use for this method. Dragon, archetypal symbol for uh, the guardian of treasures. So what are our treasures? And what is the guardian of this treasure? But our fears. Our fears. And what we learn with, with, with Dragon Dreaming is to start to learn to dance with our fears, behind our fears. There we find our treasures. And as Nelson Mandela said, we are not afraid of our shadows. We are afraid of our light. And there's where the dragons come into the game. Dreaming. Why dreaming? Dreaming is also a very deep-rooted archetypal symbol in all, all indigenous traditions. Um, and dreaming, in, out of their perspective, is life. And the aborigines from Australia, they, they say the separation of the daydream and the night dream is a, is a Western concept. So they don't have the separation. And they don't also have this separation in future, present and past. That's a concept that our system can say, yeah, to get to that point, we have to do the next step and then do the next step. And that's the way how we can start to control things. And the aborigines in Australia say, everything is a temporary knot in a process of flow. So everything comes together and disappears again, and it comes together and disappears again. So that I'm standing here right now speaking to you with this mic that was a pure chaos that come together and that moment can appear and it will disappear in the, next, in, the, in the right next moment. Try to control that. It's like a beautiful game that you can maintain. Um, and there the beauty, what I liked and discovered in the last year, also the, um, the modern ni uh, neuroscience um, have come to the same conclusion. They call it different. Um, but there was, a, there was um, a, a project, a research project, where they accompanied several children over 20 years. And um, the result was that children coming from a very difficult circumstances with an IQ of 85 points yeah, in 10 to 15 years rise up to elders, to, to, to adults, um, which has taken responsibility in their society, which built business, which raised their IQ 15 points to an IQ of one, uh, 100. How did they do that? Very easy. And like Daniel said, it's the prefrontal cortex that the, the science is discovering right now. Stimulating the prefrontal cortex. And how do you do that? You do that in, the, in your creating um, um, a circumstances that people feel welcome, feel comfortable. Yeah? So that they feel that they can express themselves. Yeah? That there is no separation anymore that we are all in the same flow, that you are welcome exactly as you are, and that you can express yourself fully. So, um, diving shortly into the Dragon Dreaming method, it based, um, first, all Dragon Dreaming projects um, supports three principles. First principle that each Dragon Dreaming project supports is personal growth. So each member of a Dragon Dreaming um, project can come from everywhere with each background, but he needs to have one commitment, his personal growth. Second principle is we create communities. Instead of building teams and collaborating, we build communities. What goal? With what goal? To support each individual in his personal growth. And the third principle that we support in all projects is... Um, service to the earth. And I needed quite some time to translate service to the earth, how I want to translate it in my language. And for me, service to the earth is giving back what you are taking. Ideally, you give, give more back than what you take, but very simply is give back what you are taking. That are the principles. And Dragon Dreaming, we live a culture which is a culture of win-win, 
always supporting each member of your community to live 100%. 100%. No compromise. That can be challenging, but in that challenge, there you will grow. And there you will find solutions which will bring you completely to the chaos and where you think, here is no solution. But finding a solution, you will have grown, you will have learned th new things, you will in innovate you. Yeah? So the invitation is always give 100%. Um, there's a process behind Dragon Dreaming. And the process behind Dragon Dreaming based on the theory. In this theory, we, um, we integrate four phases in all project development processes. Or what we say, what you ideally include in your life. But what you can uh, include in your, in your project design is include four phases. The four phases that we always include is the dreaming part. The dreaming part is the receiving the world, understanding your world, understand your own motivation, from the dreaming part, we go to the planning stage. The planning stage is thinking, thinking globally. Thinking globally and start to understand your motivation and develop strategies. After the, the planning, we go into the doing. The doing is acting locally and taking responsibility, managing, implementing your projects. And after that, we come to a part which we nearly forget in, in our society. And uh, it doesn't matter in which culture we are, in which land we are, it seems to be difficult for quite all. It's the celebration. And the celebration is not the part that we know as the loud one. It can be loud. But what we mean in Dragon Dreaming and the celebration is way more what we call the dying process. Allowing to learn what we have experienced, let go what we don't need anymore and transform in something new. And ideally, in the designing of your projects, you implement them balanced. So you use 25% of your time, your effort, your resources for each of these quadrants. Yeah. So, and, and the process to, to establish such, such a, a, um, a project is very beautiful. It's all based on circles. And we always start with a dreaming circle. The streaming circle helps to integrate each individual life dreaming in the dream of the project. So we don't make brainstorming. We are not seeking for collaborations where each one has his idea behind. We are seeking for co-creation where we encounter together and everybody can really bring them 100% and together we find a solution that everybody has place in that spot. Having this dream where we share our deep wishes, our needs, we start to develop collaboratively, together, transparent, the strategy, the long-term strategy, the short-term uh, strategies, and the next steps. And always with this attitude of participation, always empowering or supporting each member to give 100%. And afterwards, um, we go and we establish a project landscape where you find all the information that you need to translate in basic um, project management tools and to translate it in all organization models that you want. And having held workshops around the world in the last years and trained trainers in this method and seeking for, the, for answers around about this topic, living full potential, co-creation, building communities, new organization models. I still don't know how it works. And um, what I know and what I, what I discovered that at the end, it's not that important which method you use or which organizational structure you use. What I discovered for me and for myself, if I really want to grow into my full potential, it's all about building relations every moment. Building relations and starting to, to live an open mind culture. Stay curious with each person that you meet. 
Go in contact with them. Learn from them. That's how you can learn and start to grow. And for my personal path is allow the other to be fully as he is and at the same time do it with yourself. Allow yourself fully as you are. Thank you.